Hello again, and welcome to the chapter 2 of the Westlander Texture Breakdown. In this chapter we will talk about mood boards, we will talk about how to separate all the materials, we will talk about that amazing simple tool that is the color picker, and how to play around with the base colors as you are texturing. So here we are, ready for the texturing process. Our model is ready, the channels have been added, the mesh maps have been baked, the shaders have been assigned, we are ready to start assigning materials. Before doing that, um, I want to mention one thing that I do bef even before I start the modeling process. So, like everyone, I collect uh, a lot of images as reference. Uh, this is very important as you model, but it's also very important as you texture. So, for the Wastelander, I wanted to merge a few styles. Uh, one is typical World War II realistic fighter helmet uh, with something a little bit more modern. These are uh, Second World War, this is like from the 70s or from the 80s, I think. And, and it's a, actually a realist, real uh, helicopter helmet with something completely uh, post-apocalyptic. In this case, I source um, the work of a guy called Nuclear Snail Studios, who has um, a website and a Facebook group. I'm going to put the link in the description. He does a fantastic job, truly fantastic job, at recreating uh, extremely interesting and peculiar post-apocalyptic costumes with a lot of interesting elements. So. For modeling and for texturing, I tend to source these images and then copy details from each of them. I don't invent, I just assemble things that I see somewhere else. So, for example, if I'm gonna zoom in, uh, you can notice that this bit here uh, is the same as this bit here, or this bit here on the hose is the same as this one, or, for example, uh, the type of the hose is the same type of the hose, or the spark plugs are the same spark plugs, and and so on. So, uh, for example, yeah, for the helmet, I pick these details here, and I pretty much like put them in the same places. The microphone is the same microphone, and this is very important because when you will start selecting colors. Uh, and assign them to pieces of your geometry, um, you want to have a mood board like this, not a single image, but uh, a group of them. So you can check as you are progressing that all the colors are working well together and all your ideas, all the things that you sourced uh, while you were modeling can work well together, which is the main task at this point of the work. So let's start assigning our materials. So, I will pick up the gas mask first, I will isolate my texture set number one. What I want to create, I'll show you what I did before, it is something like this. So this comes with a folder which inside has a bunch of folders. Each folder is a single material, so I have the head, the gas mask main material, the straps, uh, the raw metal, uh, the shiny metal, the wire of this bit, the rubber bits, etc, etc, etc. Inside each of these folders is just a fill layer, and the properties of the fill layer are just the basic ones, so color, height, rough, metal, and all. So if I do it, just for an example, um, it will be pretty much something like this. I create a group called base materials, I create another group, I put it in there, uh, let's say head, and inside my head I put a fill layer called fill. So the head is literally nothing but black, so I care about making it just super black. No height, I don't care. Roughness, completely rough. Metallic, I put one so it will be a little bit darker. Normal and uh, displacement, I don't care. So it's all good. So now I'm gonna add a black mask. 
And then to fill the mask with the, the parts of the geometry that I want, I have two options. Option number one is to do it by hand. So I go in my geometry selection and I can pick it. If I am going into my UV space, you see that the UV shells are separated from everything else, so it's pretty easy, easy picking. Uh, the other option is to make a mask by color selection. So if you imported your model and you baked your material ID, and I did, and you go and check how your material ID looks, it looks pretty much like this, then you can make a mask with your color selection. So if I remove it and I add another one with color selection, and I pick my color, then I have the same effect. Adding a mask with a color selection for the basic work at the beginning is by far the simplest and the fastest method. So let's continue to work on it. And I'm going to create mask um, group with a fill in it. And my mask will have color selection. And if I'm picking my color, I'm going to pick this. And if I am changing my color to something black and etc. Yeah. And then, for example, I can also pick more than one color. So if I pick this color here, it will pick both of them. Which is another cool feature. And I can check if my mask is working correctly. Yes. And then I can continue. Add a new filter. Let's call bare metal. Add the new fill. Add a new mask. Uh, let me check what color is it. Mask is called selection pick this color and then change mine with something a little bit something like that that this is going to be metallic so it's going to be less rough and I can go on and usually what I do is I also when I'm happy with something I start signing color so for example this is going to be red because it's done this is going to be red because it's done. This is going to be red because it's done. This is going to be red. And if I am starting to create a new folder, this is going to be a little bit darker red, so I know that I'm still working on it. So at the end of the day, uh, I will come up with something like this, which comes with a few more materials. Some of them are just painted. Some of them are just... Uh, where is it? Yeah, there's a color selection with a little bit of fixes. It's pretty much nothing particularly different from what we just did. And then I repeated the job onto the other texture sets. So I went into the number two and I did the same. I went into the number three and I did the same. There was a lot of materials in here because I had... Uh, I had copper, plastic, different type of metals, hose, rubber, there was a lot of things. So this was quite complicated. This was actually quite simple. I only had uh, a couple of materials. Only ma main, mainly it was the helmet, two different colors of the helmet. I mean, honestly, it's just a matter of spending some time to organize groups and fill layers inside the groups. And you end up with something like this. So how did I pick the color? The color you can, as I show you before, oh, if I'm gonna isolate here, and I'm going into the color, the colors, you can eyeball it, or 
go into the properties of a fill and then pick the color that you want. Or you can use this amazing tool called Color Picker. So the Color Picker of Substance Painter has a great feature. The great feature is that it picks the color from whatever window you find. So if I am picking the color, I can pick the color from literally everything, including my mood board. So if I'm going around and I start to search for a color that I like, for example this one here, I get the color exactly like here without having to eyeball it, which is a great feature. And then if I am going, for example, in here, which is the plastic, and I want to have this color here, I can go here, pick a very dark black or something like that, and I can actually source pick from photos all the colors that I need. So if I am going, for example, I'm going to de-isolate this, or I'm going to source the color for this, for example, I am going to go into my unit number three. No, it's not this one. Actually, no, it's in here. I can go in the properties and pick the color that I want. And with this system, I can reach pretty much the um, color palette that I'm looking for. Now, the beauty of this method is that anytime that I'm changing my mind, I can try different colors. So, for example, there's been a time where I wanted to check if the painted metal, if this filter was better in a different color. So, for example, at the moment, the painted metal is just one for the eye, this little bit, and the filter. And uh, so what I can do is that I can remove it from here and then create a new one. Painted metal 2 and I can put it into a group and then I can add a black mask and in here I can apply this to just this in my metal I can decide that this is supposed to be maybe something like that, or maybe even a little bit more metallic, and see how it look like. So I tried a lot of different possibilities as I was working on uh, the colors before I decided that the colors that I continued to work on were the right ones. So I saved four variants that I liked the most, and I wanted to test if I liked them over the over the course of a few days. So I saved this render, so version 1, uh, version 2, uh, version 3, and version 4. And I kept them in my phone for a few days and I checked over a couple of days if, if I liked the color of one thing compared to another. So I decided to go for something in between over this one here but with a helmet more similar to the version 1. So of course when you see the basic colors they look logical but getting there is not a straightforward process, but it takes a little bit of time and having the ability of changing the masks and changing the colors and the properties of the basic material constantly all the time is extremely helpful because it doesn't limit your creativity as you are working on the asset. And also having the mood board handy as you are working on the colors, it facilitates your work a lot so you can really go with the flow and then try different solutions as you are progress without having to worry too much about committing to a specific color or specific map. So once we're done 
with this process uh, and we are happy with the color, reasonably happy with the color because we can always roll back and change it later, the next chapter will focus on adding the details at the moment this is all very basic we want to start adding details to every surface in here and there the decals the scratches and everything so let's move on on the next chapter and start painting some serious detailing